bad. Yeah, like we're at lunch. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Molly. I'm so excited. I'm so ex- There's a million reasons I'm excited to have you on the show. Mm. Well, thank uh, you so much. I'm like, I'm so honored and excited to talk all things, all things. You know what I like about you? Well, I like so many things about you. You guys don't know Wendy, but like, that's like, she. you actually mean that in the a hundred percent of you. <laughs> You're yeah. one of the most like authentic content people I know in this world. I learned so much, you know, you put needles in me, but wow, do I learn a lot from you as a human. How in the world did you come to being an acupuncturist and a healer? Yeah. Thank you for asking. So like many things, it was a circuitous path to arriving. I have my bachelor's degree in psychology and um, my dad sat me down and went, Wendy, really? You should be an accountant. That's, <laughs> that's like steady, solid work. And I was like, yeah, no, I'm not, not really feeling it. And like many young people, late teens, twenties, uh, I, I didn't become an accountant, but I, uh, after college was like, all right, I'm going to be a psychologist. I want to save the world. I want to do so much good. And somehow I went out, went out and got my MBA. So fo- I know. So I followed like my parents, what they wanted, got an MBA and felt so sadness. Like I was so sad with my life and my career. What were you doing with your MBA? Yeah. So it was funny when I was in um, B school, I went to Rutgers and I went at night and while everybody else at Rutgers is like, I'm going to work on Wall Street. I'm going to make a ton of money. I went, I, I, I might, I think I might want to, to do human resources and, and do good. And, right. and that's all like I want. And they're like, <laughs> right, right. They're like, oh my God, who is this person? And why, <laughs> why is she? It was an option. I know. Right. And why should it be school? Um, but I, I'm somebody that really follows through on things. So I, you know, follow through, got my MBA. And then I was doing sales and marketing work. I actually sold like little widgets and I traveled around and I sold these pneumatic accessories, widgets, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was just deeply unhappy. Mm -hmm. And I have a dear friend who's an acupuncturist. And when we would be out and people would say to her, her name's Diana, Diana, what do you do for work? I'm an acupuncturist. And I would feel this little twinge inside of me. And it was part jealousy, like, oh, I, I want to say something like that. And because she part, said it like, with such like love and excitement. Yeah, such love and excitement. And like, I, I just, I want, I, I mean, in, really, I want to heal the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, yeah, so I, I would feel this little twinge you know, life kind of went a whole bunch of different directions. I ended up in New York City and again, just kept feeling like I I really need to do something different, explored a bunch of different things and kept coming back to acupuncture. And then finally, it was when I started getting treated myself. Mm -hmm. Like I had a bunch of allergies and just some, some health stuff and got my first acupuncture treatment. And that was it. I mean, really, it was the first treatment. And again, I mean, it had been like kind of nudging back there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like everybody in the world needs to do this. And we would seriously have world peace if if everybody- And no illness. um, And no illness. Right, right. And so I saw such dramatic effects in my own body, in my mind, my spirit, like everything. And that was it. And uh, fortunately, I live in New York City. And at that time, there were three acupuncture schools. Mm -hmm. And so I visited all three schools, found landed on Tri State, which um, just was a beautiful fit for me and and started school. So in my 30s, and my father, who said I was supposed to be an accountant in my 30s, looked at me and went, Wendy, you're too old. Yeah. You're too old. I was no. like, what? You know, and it's funny, I'm 52 now. And I, I, I look back and I was like, what the, what the fuck? Oh, I mean, those, <laughs> those constructs are so Marsha Linehan, who created dialectical behavioral therapy, uh, published her manual at 50. Yeah. And right. this is like the most groundbreaking treatment, you know, that exists for borderline personality disorder. When you say that you 
were unhappy? Like, mm-hmm. how did that show itself? When, mm-hmm. what did that look like? Yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, I, I kept like searching and searching and I would get in like one, it, it's start, like every aspect of my life, like my love life sucked. You know, I kept getting in like one bad relationship after another. Um, I was depressed. I, and you know, and I was good at my work. Like I, again, I'm, I'm somebody who follows through on things. I have a really high work ethic, but like my life kind of like, if you sort of peeked in just a little bit, Mm -hmm. you peek in and go, it's okay. But all I have to do is like dig just a little bit more. And there was just profound sadness. Mm -hmm. And again, like everything was kind of in shambles. Once you sort of also, it's sort of the thing like, right. Like, you know, now how miserable you were then, but I don't know when I've been in that kind of like stagnant, lost Mm -hmm. stop sign depression. It's like, Mm -hmm. you don't really know it because it just is. Right. 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 And there was, you know, lots of things in, in my life that contributed to that. And now that I have work that I'm so passionate about, I've discovered for me that work and that creative outlet is paramount for my well-being. Mm-hmm. You know, when COVID hit and there was a time where, and I also actually ended up getting sick, but I stopped working and my husband said, Wendy, it's almost like you actually should be paying your patients to see you because you need this so much. Like, it's not like, <laughs> you know, for some people, there's other things that are paramount. Mm-hmm. And for me, work is crucial for my well being. Like, to feel like I'm contributing it to the world in a positive way, in that way. And again, there's a million ways to contribute in positive ways. But for me, um, my work is, is the way, like, it just fills my soul. Oh yeah. And I think uh, that happened to me today. I was like out of my mind. And then I had a session at 10 and I literally wanted to be like, can I give you the money for this? <laughs> Cause I'm profoundly different. I feel so useful. I still so ground. Thank you so much. Right. It just happened to me again, right, right before this. I know we're really lucky, but that's an interesting piece too. Cause yeah, I mean, I am someone who needs to be in service or, or else I'm, I really get so, and I, I am so interested in what you think about this, but self-absorbed. And I think it's really problematic culturally, like so obsessed with myself and my little thoughts mm-hmm. and my feeling. And then I can't remember. And then my little things become big things they're not things because there was like a hurricane that just wrecked, you know, millions of right. lives. Oh my yesterday. gosh, right. right. And I'm so into like, but the dog food didn't come yet, you know? <laughs> well, like truly, right? Like that's how small my thinking can get. And then I'm like a useless venture, right? Uh, right, we all do that. We Our problems are, are become huge, right? And we all are self-absorbed. Like it's the human nature to be self focused. And so for me, and it sounds like for you too, to step out of that absorption and to focus on someone else and to give in a way that's meaningful. I mean, it fills me. And for that time when I'm with somebody, I'm not thinking about any of my problems, any of my to-do lists. I become present to who is in front of me and that, oh my gosh. I mean, that is, that's meditation. That is love. That's being so anchored in the present. Yeah. Like, gosh, this is, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's like the core value. I mean, it's that core value that helps us. And I'll put this in the show notes, but like that, I don't know if you, that St. Francis prayer Mm. is like when I don't know what to do and it's like, you know, please help me to love rather than be loved, to forgive rather than to be forgiven. And it's like, really just not like, like, cause my, when my brain goes to that place of like self-absorption, it's never like, you're the best. You're amazing. <laughs> right. I love you. Right. Right. You look and, great. <laughs> and it's <laughs> interesting. So, you know, people that see me for acupuncture often think like I'm, I'm selfless in all aspects of my life. I think that. I, don't, I think you should be the person, you know, that, that pillow that says, I just think 
I just want to be the person my dog thinks I am. Like, right. I think that about you. I think you're like just right. an angel that walks the earth and does nothing but see me at the door and walk me right. out the door. Right, 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 right. And, and I mean, and obviously that's not true. Right. <laughs> you know, right. I, I, I mean, ask my family and, and I have, you know, I can be moody at times and I can be this I'd and I can be, all, you know, that. all the things. I'd love to see right? you in a bad mood. Will you call me? I just want to hear Sure. Yeah, you're right. Me. So I can be like, ah. Yeah, uh, like, wow. <laughs> and how lovely that I get to spend a lot of my time being in, in a place that's like, oh, it's, this is of service. And so, right. So it really fills me. Curious about two things. Number one, mm-hmm. I th- love when people find their path and follow it, but I do not think it's easy. And I would love mm-hmm. to hear a little bit more of a micro breakdown of how you decided to move away from your MBA and go to, mm-hmm. I think there's just, there's like a little unpack there and then like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to acupuncture school. But my, my other question maybe w- first, which is there was no part of you that thought that acupuncture was woo woo or kind of bu- like a lot of people like just think it's total bullshit like oh that wouldn't work for me friend of mine used to say you know a spiritual people never choose to be spiritual something happens and we decide right. to shift how we choose to believe and how we choose to see this world which certainly is my story so I'm really curious about that yeah yeah so I for me I I've kind of always been slightly woo woo but yet, I mean, as I alluded to my father wanting me to be an accountant, you know, I grew up in, in my parents divorced and, and my mom supported sort of the like, follow your passion and, and the world is more than what it seems. And then just this very pragmatic, logical, rational dad. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, so I think for me, again, that, that deep unhappiness of not following our, our, my true calling of not being in a place that really was what I wanted and yet, but struggling with the like, well, but I need to pay the bills and how will this, like, how, what are, what's the, the, the grounded and I'm a Virgo. I'm very methodical and gratitude. Yeah. But like, how is all of this actually going to work? And so there was part, just this absolute, just trust in the, like, okay, I am so, I guess it became like, I'm so deeply unhappy that I have to trust or else I will end up in a ditch someplace. Like it really got, I was so like, this is just like, so not working. My whole life is not working. And so So I have have to say a lot of people stay there. A lot of people, a lot of people, right. We, that just below sea level becomes life and you can get really mm -hmm. accustomed to that. You know, I've treated plenty of people where that's the case and just like, no, no, no. Like I can breathe a little bit because I'm not always drowning. Right. 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 And, and I think it it was actually for me, the getting treated, having a friend that was in acupuncture. So I could see, I could see, and she's actually a Virgo as well. So I could see her like the, the grounded of like, okay, there is a very practical quality and actually being a healer, having this practical quality, the business sense actually helps to make the business, to help it make it work, right? If we're all like out there, all right, business is also that masculine must land. It must have a plan. At the end of the day, it's like, you know, I have to I have to be able to put food on the table, right? Yeah. So well, it's that balance, yeah. right? That it's that, a balance. That that um sort of I guess in the language, like the crown chakra, like having that flighty, lifted, connected above stuff, but then also having that deep, like connected. I actually have seen in the spiritual communities it it really goes wrong when it's oh, it can above. go so oh totally. <laughs> like that's not a healthy place to be, to just be like I'm just going to bliss out. Right. Right. And, and meditate myself to like blissful joy and, and everything's just going to like flow in. And if, if I just think something, right. <laughs> it will happen. Yeah. And that's all it has to be. And I've manifested everything good and bad. And right. And then we also end up with this like victim thing or, or, or pointing fingers of like, oh, you, you're not 
you're not feeling well. Oh, well, you just, you just have to change your thinking. Oh, can and we talk about that. Same yeah. I mean, that's thing. bullshit. I, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. 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 Like, well, cause like, you know, you get sick sometimes. <laughs> right. Right. I, I mean, so it's like some, like there's not always an answer. Like mm. sometimes bad stuff happens and it's not for my higher good. It just, it sucks. And it was bad. And that's not, you know, sometimes bad stuff happens and it is for our evolution and for our personal growth. And then some of this shit happens for no good reason. And or that we can understand. That's or that we can, we, understand. That can understand. Right, right, right. I mean, right. Perhaps there is some bigger thing, but it's not, it's not so trite. Right. right? We'd make it into a trite thing. So, right. Perhaps there is some bigger thing. Well, yeah. Or- like it's all going to be okay dependent on your definition of okay right totally. like and your level of privilege mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, right I mean I'm fairly privileged mm-hmm. so ultimate the end it is going to be okay right for, for somebody else it may truly not be okay right, right. and we yeah. just right we play the hand we're dealt yeah so you moved into acupuncture and I, I can, so I love alternative medicine. It's really something that, uh, because I think I had so much traditional medicine that didn't serve me in the beginning that my love affair with alternative medicine is just, it's profound. And I really want to explain some of it to my audience. Cause mm. I, and so can you like sort of <laughs> give like, the 101? Yeah. Or... Like acupuncture yeah. 101. Like what yeah. is it? You put needles in my body and then what happens? Like, right. Right. Into, it's like the depth of it, but what? Right. What I mean, happening? it seems like so strange, like, all right, little needles. And so part of actually what drew me to acupuncture is both the creative, the woo woo part, like the energetics. And then just like, it's based on thousands of years. Yeah of something working and that Western medicine can actually measure an acupuncture point. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm, uh, you know, I've been doing this a long time. Like I can, I can sort of feel the acupuncture point, you know, a Western medicine uh, can measure by a lower electrical resistance on the acupuncture point. So through the body, there's the points that um, are on meridians or energy pathways that run through our organ system. And there's about 350 acupuncture points on the body. And there's 12 main meridians. There's eight extra meridians. And right, that sounds like, woo! But basically, there are points. So uh, below the skin is we have fascia. And that's like, we're basically this whole sheath of fascia. So we are electrical underneath our skin. And and so these acupuncture points, there's a little less electrical resistance. And so we can tap in to this sheath underneath. Uh, So I'm not putting needles like into the nerves. Nobody would like me if I did that. And so going in right below the skin to this place that connects everything. And so there can be a place in the, you know, that I maybe put a a needle in your foot that then has an effect on another part of the body. Can you be more specific? Can you give like a specific, can you be really specific about that? Like just give like a scenario of that. So you put this thing on my big toe and what is it meant to do in my, like, what is it meant to do? Yes. Yes. So so here's a little more of the like woo woo. So it's tapping into the the way the energy runs through the body. And God, like, so, I don't know, like maybe I've just been spiritual so long. Like it doesn't sound woo woo to me. It actually <laughs> sounds like physics to me. You know right, what I mean? Right. I'm like, right. Well, and it is. And so that's the amazing thing as acupuncture has become a little more mainstream. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, well, there's studies and double blind study. Well, it's kind of hard to have a double blind study because either like, right, either like, (laughs) right. There's sort of like the sham acupuncture to the real acupuncture. So that's a little bit how they, how they do that. But um, so, yeah, so tapping, so moving. um, So you think about your car, 
So your car, uh, like the oil change, like if you don't take care of like cleaning out the oil, it gets all like gunked up and clogged up, right? And that happens in the body. Mm. So our body from just daily living gets sort of clogged up. And we, we, you know, we have these phrases like, oh, I feel like I'm in the flow or I feel yeah. stagnant and stuck. So I put a needle someplace in the body and it's meant to help basically clear out the gunk mm. that's accumulated in the body. And some of that is this sort of, uh, electrical, you know, energetic, and then some can be very specific of like, man, my muscle seriously feels like it's all bound up into a big old knot. And then the acupuncture can also help release the, the muscle. And so things get clogged and bound up and we're inviting flow into yeah. the body. I think that really makes all the sense in the world that it's sort of unsticks. I know for me, I mean, I've had I wouldn't call medical miracles. I think just functions of acupuncture happen. I had, um, when I had all the skin removed after I lost, you know, like 185 pounds, I had a really botched scar. Part of that botched scar, I think is from being alcoholic and being eating disordered and not taking care of myself after that happened. But that scar was gray and I was getting fibroid tumors and I wasn't getting my period. And I went to an acupuncturist and she was Chinese. They put tons of needles in you. Yeah. And she basically bulletin boarded uh -huh. from my hip to my hip for three months or so. And I got my period back and the scar looked red and beautiful like it should. Mm. And I remember going to the gynecologist and saying, yeah, I got my period back. And he said, well, then we're definitely probably going to take out those fibroid tumors. They're going to be enormous. And I was like, okay, life on life's terms. And they were gone. Wow. Yes. Right. So a big, up. a big scar is that's a, a very, a, a more visible manifestation of a blockage wow. Right, the adhesions and right, everything is then blocked right across. So of course you weren't getting your period. That's what she said to me. She said, you're chi blocked. And I was right. like, and right. I like agreed because I felt stuck in and pain. You felt stuck. And, and my and period things... wasn't happening. Like I wasn't like talk about not being in flow, like actually you literally. Were literally <laughs> not in flow. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. But here's the other thing. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So here's the other thing I want to talk about with acupuncture and the body. Like, cause I, until I just feel like we're not going to fully hear, heal until we lean into this a little bit more, which is to say emotions and physical symptoms are linked. Absolutely. Okay. What do, what do we say to the people that are like, come on, guys, really? <laughs> I'm just going to go take some Advil. Like what? Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Can you sort of explain it professionally? Like, I just know it should be true. I can't wait to tell the story in a second mm -hmm. of my acupuncture yesterday, but what, or Tuesday, but what, like, can you just talk us through this? Sure. So, First of all, let's back up. So an acute injury, like say you step off a curb and you twist your ankle, right? That's an acute injury that may or may not have an emotional component. Maybe it's, right, you know, right, right, right. to slow down or this or that. Right, twist but, my neck, you know, in Pilates. You, you right, throw a right. needle in that, right. Right, so that has less emotional baggage. I mean, it could have a lot again. Let's just, okay. let's just, for, for simplicity, for shits right? and giggles. Right. Right. Yeah, for right. shits and giggles. Right. Let's say like that acute injury is like low on the emotional component scale. So our emotions, you know, some of us, especially for ones that bottle down our emotions, it's like, oh, I feel all these things, but I'm gonna like- Can I ask one quick question? Cause yes. this is a common theme in, uh, with my audience, but not just bottle us down, but those of us who are also really scared of our emotions. Cause I know mm. we turn to food and we turn to, we turn like what the kind of- Right, we turn to all, the, all of our vices. We're yes, like, yes, we do. I can't handle it. Rage that's yes. gonna come. I can't handle the sadness. So that would be sort of the, the other idea. I, I, absolutely. I mean, and it's, it's effing scary. Emotions are like the first I mean, round is so scary. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. it's right. So so we all have like our patterns of of suppressing 
the the emotions and so we we press them down and we have our things that cut us off right from mm-hmm. from feeling but they have to go someplace right we're pushing mm-hmm. it down and those emotions no, like slow that one down like they have like when they we're have- not, when we're like, it's too much for me to handle. And then we're going and we're like stuffing it down with protein bars. It's mm-hmm. not as though the body's need to express that feeling goes nowhere because animals that are not um, habituated complete cycles of feelings. That's right. why they don't have trauma. Right. So we're not going and and like an animal that shakes it right, we're off. We're not going to the tree shaking we're it off. Like, okay, we're, right, we're not like, we're not, we're not, yeah. right. Or, and then expressing, we're not going and like screaming, primal yes. screams into a pillow, you know, oh. like anything or just, so we're, so we don't do that. So it's energy. Mm. So our emotions are energy and energy doesn't just write the law of physics. Energy just doesn't like right go any like Chill. just doesn't disappear right. and you're like, okay cool you don't want to have the feeling me neither we're good <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so energy the energy of whatever the emotion is goes someplace mm-hmm. and it you know for many of us it gets lodged in the body and so it gets lodged someplace and at first we might not notice especially if we're doing things that kind of numb us out to our body and we're not as in tune with our own body. It's like, it's like, Oh no, it doesn't go anywhere because we've cut up, we've cut ourselves off from our sweet body. Mm. So we're just unaware like, Oh, I don't even know. Mm. But over time, right. We've suppressed or, or we just like, that's too much. And it gets louder and louder and louder until it's like, oh my gosh, my stomach really hurts. Or man, my menstrual cycle is really messed up. Or I'm getting really bad headaches or, you know, whatever it is, you know, it gets louder and louder and louder. So I'll share something very personal. So I had breast cancer. That's the love language of this show. Oh, that's okay. So you had breast cancer. I had breast cancer and I do not take on that. I caused the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it like, I didn't do anything wrong. None of that stuff. Though I, before I got diagnosed, I, um, I did this intense week long thing called the Hoffman process. Mm -hmm. I went out to California did the Hoffman process. And part of the process is we draw like on this big piece of paper, our dark side. And we write all the like words that like we, all the bad stuff we say to ourselves. And there's this picture. And I kid you not, the tumor looked exactly like what I drew on my dark side. And it was on my left side. So it was over my heart. And before I was diagnosed, you know, I was starting to have this pain. And I, I was like, man, I'm manif- like, and again, manifesting, like I didn't create this, like, right. you know, so I'm not, not taking on a victim thing. And it looked like my dark side and it was over my heart. And, you know, I've had some, some pretty big, big wounds there in, in my, in my sweetheart space, especially in childhood, a lot of abandonment stuff. And like, man, this freaking tumor, it, it, it was, it was my dark side. It was like every voice, every, all, all the negative stuff, all the protection stuff. I mean, it just, there it was, it manifested as a cancerous tumor. That happened. Yeah. I mean, if, can I ask, I mean, you don't have to answer this. And I, I can, oh, I'm, you know, I'm an open book. <laughs> well, I'm so curious. Cause you are, you know, an I don't, I want to try to keep it to acupuncture, but you're also a Reiki healer, probably Mm. the most gifted Mm. one I've ever gone to in my life. Mm. And I've been around and I've been around the block. Um, Did you do Western medicine? I did. So, and well, like, how did you decide? Like, that's, I find that this is the whole, this is exactly why I wanted you on the show. Right. Yeah. So it's so interesting. So the tumor, so I had a 10 centimeter tumor. Is that big? I'm not a. It is effing large. Oh, it, okay. it, it, it basically, I had healthy, like C almost D cup breast. It filled my entire left breast. I mean, wow. so it was so big that there was no question. So it wasn't like, oh, I had stage zero or one. Like I was stage three. Yeah. 
Right. Right. So I, I it was like, I, and, and I also feel like that was beautiful for me because then there was absolutely no question that I had to do both. Mm. So the universe didn't leave it to me like, well, maybe just, you know, it was like, this is really big. You cannot mess around. Mm. And so I had, I did everything they told me Western medicine. And of course I did everything, you know, holistically, spiritually. So I did both of it. Mm. And, and that was for me personally, what I think has propelled me even like a deeper understanding and compassion for anybody that goes through a health challenge and holding and honoring what Western medicine has to offer. Cause yeah. there is a place for that. Right. And I'm not anti-Western medicine um, for its time and place. I think we jump to it too quickly, right. uh, but in certainly in stage three breast cancer, it was not, I was like, all right, yes. I, mean, yes, I think I there will. are people that maybe wouldn't have been as balanced as that. I hope to think I would be. It's just so hard to know, right? It's so like, hard. Like- well, because the treatment of Western medicine for cancer is awful. I mean, right. I felt fine. I mean, yes, I had this big tumor and it felt like I could feel it. I'm the, I actually diagnosed it myself because wow. mammograms were missing it, even though it got like- huge. Even though it was that enormous? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, well, at that point when it got that big, but I had, you know, regular mammograms and right. it was the type of cancer. It was a lobular and it was very stringy. Mm-hmm. And so it, mammograms just missed it. It was like, it wasn't until it got big that it actually congealed into a tumor. And the beautiful thing was I was healthy and that my body contained it. Hmm. My, like it didn't spread throughout my body. I mm-hmm. didn't mis- metastasize, you know, and the reason why I like unhealthy is my body was really smart. It was like, oh, you had this bad thing happening. We are just going to contain it. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger, but we're holding on. Like we're still containing this tumor and we're not letting it go through, through your body. That's amazing. Right. It's amazing. The body's body's a miracle. When we let it be, what do you think about binge eating and eating disorders? What are your thoughts on it as an acupuncturist? Yeah. Um, so my mom, she didn't binge eat, but she, she had an eating disorder. Um, she would track her weight daily. Oh, so there was a calendar was a compulsivity around, there it. was a compulsivity. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and in my mom's mind, you could never be too thin. Mm-hmm. Like she would say, I mean, literally say like, you could never be too blonde and you right. could never be too thin. Yeah. That's right? And the she culture had, too. Right. And she had multiple plastic surgeries and she had, she had all sorts of stuff. So I, I do have a very personal, like feeling about, you know, just watching my mom struggle with um, self-love mm-hmm. and trying to control her outer appearance so much for love and acceptance. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically she, she's a beautiful woman and smart as all get out, but her self-worth was really about how she looked. Mm -hmm. You know, she was born in 1943, you know, 1950s mentality of like, you know, women's appearance. And we still, I mean, we still had that, but I mean, it was very much. um, So as far as acupuncture and the energetics, I mean, first of all, I just have so much love and compassion for how you know the ways we women what we go through Mm -hmm. as trying to fit and mold ourselves and sculpt our bodies Mm -hmm. into something that is somebody else's ideal that we somehow have like taken on or Mm -hmm. or and you know can trying to control um what about its it's root though like when you think about it like as i i came to you the other day with this like raging urinary tract mm-hmm. infection, if we're just having all the honesty on the show and you were like, wow, Molly, like when you really, it's really like the bladder and that urinary tract is deep mm-hmm. and profound, you know, fear. What did you say? Right. Um, fear. Be- and- right. Fear. Right. So the stomach and, so I, and by the way, right. I was like, well, that's on the nosiest of the nose. So let's get to the okay. lady. Yeah. I also took antibiotics, which is very rare for me, but there was a new clause made when I got a UTI, but when, so so when the, we think there's about, a, there's yeah, a, yeah, the... there's a, 
the energetic of it is worry and self-love and nurturing. Mm. So the energetic of like, uh, I'm both like, maybe I didn't get the nurturing, yeah. Uh, as as a as a kid, like mom in particular, and nothing against sure. our sweet mamas, you know. No, but, not at all. But you know, that's right. what Freud but, says. Freud says food is mommy, money is daddy. I mean, yeah, right, right. And mom and is so, a big part of the food, of course. Right, and so in in Chinese medicine, acupuncture that corresponds to the earth element. Mm. So earth element, nurturing, mm. um, self soothing, and also this like over thinking over, 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 over here and yeah. not really in the, settle- in the head, the overthinking. Right. And the, the right. And not settling mind. deeply into our body and then nurturing ourselves and, and feeling that deep sense of uh, belonging and connection. And so we're, you know, we're both trying to feed that. And then it's like, mm. ugh. but that's, you know, so we overdo, right. I like, oh my gosh, I long for connection. I long for that nurturing. I long for the mama, you know, the mama the love. The yeah. The earth. Sure. Yeah. And then, and so we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. Yeah. Wow. Do you think that acupuncture can help with eating disorder? Also, wait, let me go back to one more question. Well, what about addictions? Is there a, a similar mm-hmm. concept in it? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So that addiction of, of, right. It's, it's addiction often is dealing with emotions just like, right. That we, I, I, we we're not digesting or suppressing. Uh, you know, like my, my father, my father smoked for a long time. He finally quit. Yay. Mm-hmm. Um, but right. We, we, we smoke and then there's like a, a cutting off. Like we take in yeah. the nicotine and it cuts off the heart literally like we breathe in and then we take in the smoke and then it's it's like here and so everything can stay down wow right so would you say cigarette smoking is like a function of like the heart like oh absolutely absolutely it's like this suppression wow. of that's right deep. it's deep it's deep and but i have a question about sugar and alcohol in that case because yeah. like they really are liver impacted diseases in a big, big, big Mm -hmm. way. And the liver Mm -hmm. is anger. Right. Can you walk me through Mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. I'm obsessed. Like, no, I'm like, (laughs) get your notepads out, y'all. Get your Uh, notepads out. Well, this is going to blow people's minds, right? Right. So sugar is processed in the liver, the alcohol, that's where we get non-alcoholic and alcoholic fatty liver syndrome and the livers were anger stored, right? We're anger stored. Right. So it's, and most of us have some amount of rage and especially for a woman, like, oh yeah, who, we're not allowed to rage. Oh, yeah. We're not, we're not, that's like not part of what we are allowed to, to do. So even if we're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed, <laughs> but we're not just like, I fuck it you know, like we don't do that. We're like, yeah, oh, I'm, 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 I'm pissed. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'm done. Okay. Next thing. Like, yeah, no, it's all, it's all better. Uh, so, so that the liver right, is un, we're not digesting mm. the, the rage. We're not expressing it. Ang- anger is, is, I mean, it's just energy. It's just an emotion, mm. just energy, but yet, but there's the hierarchy of emotions. So we women are allowed to feel, maybe we feel sad. Yeah. Right. Maybe that's like dramatic, you know, it's right. Right. (laughs) Right. 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 But there's like, or I don't know, there's, yeah, there's some things that we women are sort of, mm, we're allowed a little more leeway with anger. Anger is not one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Anger is not. It's for men. Yeah. It's for men. Right. Right. So we we're, we're not given the space and then this will blow your mind. So in Chinese medicine, the liver, so there's there's a, a like a, a wheel and and each element sort of um, affects in different ways and the liver affects the stomach and spleen our earth elements so wow. the wood the liver overacts so we're not we're not processing it so it's building up energy that's that's like building 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 but we're not releasing it and then it goes over to stomach spleen and it goes Mm. and it sort of pounces on sweet sweet earth 
and then gets earth gets trounced and then we're like oh my gosh right my poor sweet earth and i want to eat more because i feel so like right. i feel sad and you know the, the liver's overacting and all this anger has no place to go and then the the we're trying to balance it with like oh ice cream's gonna make me feel better because yeah. and you know for a hot second it maybe it oh, does sure. And it's right? a lot more snow group of, of that being, again, like what we were saying before, like that being a reasonable way to heal, you know, like, okay, like, let me just binge on this. I'll feel numb. I'll feel terrible tomorrow. And that just becomes the thing, you know, when we're talking right. about your depression, that just becomes, right. it becomes acceptable. the thing, right. It becomes acceptable. Right. Um, I was thinking about when I was in acupuncture before I moved and I, uh, before I moved to Charlotte and I had a big breakup and, you know, of course I told my acupuncture, so my mother was like, you told your acupuncturist about the breakup? I was like, mom, that's like the center focus of acupuncture, right? Like, cause if you're in good acupuncture, you're, the feelings are a big part of it. Oh, right? absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, people come in and they'll apologize to me like, oh, Wendy, but I know you're not my therapist. And I'm like, <laughs> not me. I'm like, I'm like here, here it is, is Wendy. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, and I, I said, please don't apologize. Like, right. I'm not your therapist and, and we're not. And this is simply moving the energy. So there is no problem. In fact, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. We vocalize. Okay. So we let, we bring that in that moves some energy. So already the treatment has started. That's beautiful. Right. That's by like, yeah, no, that's, it's, that's so, a, but I think I'm a therapist. I think it's the most energetic people say, yeah. I'm so sorry to say all of this. I'm like, you got to say, someone's got to hold it. No, you know? Right. Like, and so it's just the energy moving and a good practitioner doesn't take that on. It's, you know, right. when I, the first year I was in practice, yes, I did dream about my patients and like, you know, I, you know, I was a new practitioner now. I mean, I love my patients. Like I deeply, like everybody lives in my heart and I'm not dreaming about them. Thankfully, mm -hmm. like I might, like before the treatment, okay, let me like bring them back in, in my heart. What, like what might be needed and then, but I'm sending boundaries. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's just energy. It's, it's well, just, I mean, it's just energy. What a great way to start thinking of things. Okay. I have a few questions. I have so many more questions. <laughs> so, I imagine if you, okay, like I think everybody should do acupuncture. You think everybody should do acupuncture. Mm -hmm. I really do. I don't think mm -hmm. it's a bad idea for anybody. Can you talk to us a little bit about like the aftermath of acupuncture? Like I've just been mm -hmm. in acupuncture my whole life, right? And they mm -hmm. say, you know, if you're going for migraines, you're going to get a bad migraine probably after that's how the treatment's working. I had such an intense session with you two weeks ago. We were supposed to have done this podcast two weeks ago, last week. And right. I was like, I'm Not torn happening. up from our session. I can't do it, which I have to say, uh, kudos to me for saying what I need. Yes, I, yes, that's like, yes. to me, like, I'm so proud yes. of myself when I do things like that. Like, cause I'm so the kind of person who would just be like in so much pain, right. I'm plowing through right, like a right? crappy that's... podcast with you, but like, what is that about? Can you explain the Eastern medicine piece of that? Sure. Sure. So for actually I'll say Western medicine first. So we're, we're really, tapping into nervous system and moving out of the fight, flight, freeze mode, your, mode, your sympathetic dominant and prompting the body and actually teaching the body how to transition back to rest, digest and renew mm -hmm. parasympathetic. Wow. So we can have a reaction if, if, especially if we've been in the sympathetic dominant, that fight or flight mode for a long time and then the body gets prompted into this, you know, more peaceful place, it can be actually a little jarring moving out of that state and there can be a reaction. So like when I first started getting acupuncture, you know, living in New York city, nervous system kind of jacked up, I'd go home and sleep for three hours. You know, I, I was like, I was like, and I, I, I mean, I had to, like, there was no way I could not. Hmm go to it sleep like really activated that in you. It was like, it activated in me right now, time to rest right the freak now yeah. and to help continue the treatment. Cause the acupuncture, right. I take the needles out, 
but the treatment's not over. Right, that makes sense. That's when the work begins. Yeah. So there, it leaves sort of the imprint and the body then, again, the body's so wise, it continues mm. the work of the treatment. And That's so that so could- deep. Yes. Right. Yeah, so the body- Sarah, Yeah. Yeah. My friend Sarah went to see you. She was like, I just felt so terrible the day after. I was like, I mean, that's good healing in my experience like that. It, but I guess what you're saying, it makes sense. It's like, it's not just like suppress. It's like, oh, I have more to do. I need to let go of more. I need to let right. go of more. Right. right. And that so some people, you know, we all want to have the blissed out experience because that's what we're all seeking. Right. Right. We, and, and, and I have to say like eight times out of 10, you do walk out feeling pretty blissed out. Right. And it's also trusting yourself, the body, the wisdom of your own, of your own body that, you know, two times out of 10, you may not feel so great afterwards. You know, I've had people, you know, call me up the next day. I'm like, oh, I'm going to feel like shit. Yeah. Like what my pain is like 10 times worse. And, you know, I talked them through and then, it's usually then like 72 hours later, then I get another message. Usually it's a message at this point. They're like, I feel so much better. I feel like, like, <laughs> oh my so gosh. Impatient as We're humans. so impatient. We're yeah. so, and we just, and you know, so scared. It's really sweet. Okay. Here's, I think this has to be like my second to last or last question, which is, <laughs> well, you're, you know, you're, you're so tapped in sort of this realm. If you had, so if you had to suggest a way of healing outside of acupuncture. I'm sure you do a lot of modalities, prayer, meditation, nature. Like what do you, mm -hmm. what do you think it for you, not even for anybody mm -hmm. for you, what are your, mm -hmm. what are your ways that you come back to yourself? That's like a wonderful mm -hmm. way. So how do you, what, what do you do? Yeah. So nature for me is, is just heaven. It, it, it really just being in nature and it doesn't have to be for me, uh, it doesn't have to be dramatic, but just like noticing like, oh, like what, se like, what season are we in? <laughs> like, like, what's going on? Um, so coming back to, to nature and moving my body mm. and, and moving my body and you know, I'm a yoga instructor. And I mean, honestly, like when I move my own body, I, I don't do like a linear sort of looking class, like yoga can be very, I don't know, sort of, yeah, rrr, rigid. Rrr. Yeah. yeah. And so my movement is more like maybe a few yoga poses. Maybe I like dance a little mm -hmm. So something that just brings me back into my body. Yeah. And I, I feel joyful in, in that, in that movement, or, you know, maybe I might not be enjoying I'm raging and then I'm moving and I'm going to a space and I'm screaming Yeah. and I'm moving my body. Uh, cause you know, just it's very animalistic what you it's do, but I mean that in right. the most complimentary way. Yeah. So because really how, how do moving. we, how do we move? How do we move anger? Well, it's right? like, how do we move through it? If we don't move, <laughs> right. If we don't move, we don't move. And then I'm, and I'm a walker, you know, so mm. even sometimes it's like, all right. We live I, in such a nice neighborhood. For yeah, we live in such a nice neighborhood. So it's yeah. like, all right. right. We both, not to brag, the, not to brag about Plaza Midwood and Charlotte. It's lovely. It is right? like Take the, the dog out or just go. place to walk. It really yeah. is. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, one more question. I have a thousand more. Maybe you want to have mm -hmm. me on twice, but I'm so into this like idea of like, Cause I, you're the kind of person like in the 12 steps, like, you know, you want what you have. I want what you have. Like, who are your teachers? If you could give us two teachers that we would want to mm. learn from, like, who do you love? Mm, mm, mm. So there's, there's so many, but I, I say that the biggest teacher is actually ourself. Oh, wow. Um, and our own, our own body, our own knowing. So we we seek outside so much. Mm. Wendy, this is the answer. <laughs> You're like you. No books, no podcasts, just you. Yeah. So that and that how is... would we go about doing that? How do what if I don't trust myself one minute? Yes. So then it's it's finding um people that, that we trust mm. to to process with you know so that dear beloved friend that we can just share 
anything with or the mm -hmm. practitioner that we feel just that we just love and, and feel no judgment from so that we can help have that pulled out of ourselves because mm -hmm. we really we know so it's there it resides inside so it's helping that come out and then of course you know I mean there's like I mean there's so many amazing I think that's the it. best answer I've heard that's... for a minute it really is yeah. and so where can we find you I like I get your yeah. every week where can we find yeah. you if we want to if we want more Wendy I always want more Wendy personally but so super super easy my name is my website, wendyswanson.com. And if you scroll down on my main page, um, there'll be a place to sign up for my newsletter. Yeah. And I write every week. I like to write. That that for me is another way of like moving energy oh, is writing. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I really enjoy writing. Um, so I try to write uh, frequently. And, but I don't bombard you. So once a week newsletter. Well, it's also very clear that you're writing it. It isn't like, um, like an email series. You're like, hi, no. what I'm thinking about today. It's very, yeah. it's very, <laughs> like this podcast. and you yeah. have like little retreats and all these sorts I do. of things. So I do. there's lots of ways to spend. Oh my time gosh. With right. You don't have to necessarily live in the Charlotte area. No, like you, you can, can live here. in, you can go to Costa Rica with you if you want. Yes. Yes. Don't think I haven't considered it. Mm. Well, Wendy, as delighted Molly. as usual. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Thank you. All of your wisdom with us and your yeah. energy and everything about you. Thank you. Thank Molly, you. I love what you're doing. Thank you so <laughs> much. Love you. Love you too. All right. Bye, everyone.